I gotta say the last few mornings I've been thinking about John Stevens. See those little dark spots? Those are all wormholes. Everywhere. Not sure why they've decided to show up in the last week or so. But, well, I do kind of know why. Right there's the edge of where the sprinkler came to. I am in the corner here by the pump. This is why we have lots of moles, because they are fed very well. Because we have millions of worms. Just more and more and more and more. So, that, that means we should have really healthy soil. I mean, if there aren't wormholes, the other alternative is it's slugs, but, yeah, I don't think it's slugs. We generally don't have much issue with slugs, generally. So, yeah, time to turn it on. Just went up and checked. The big traveler's got a little ways to go, and... The little traveler did not get put where it was supposed to. The big traveler is right up here, literally. Right there, you just can't see it. The little traveler is on the very next riser. Big traveler heads south, which is that way. Little traveler was supposed to go north off the next riser. They would have both been done with their settings at the same time. Big Traveler needs to go to that other riser next. Things would have worked out great. Well, that's not where it got put. It got put parallel to the fence on this side of the fence and ran east. And to make it better, somebody forgot to turn on the drive on the Traveler. So it sat there and ran for, I don't know how long yesterday. I wasn't here. I was disking. Uh, it sat there and ran for probably two or three hours in one spot, never moved. I got it set on high, so maybe it'll get in about the same time as the big one. And then the big one can get moved. In the meantime, I gotta reach through here to get stuff. Yes, I know, it would be so wonderful to have a better setup. Then I kinda think sometimes, you know, maybe instead of putting a, putting panels around the pump to keep the cows off it, Maybe mount the panels to the pump and put a spud or something through the hitch so they can't move it. I don't know. I mean, years ago, we never even worried about it, but they didn't mess with it. And, you know, it only takes once. The old pump set back farther. Well, a couple pumps ago, it set. Well, the creek bank used to be back farther. This is thank you to high water not getting out of the bank staying right at the top of the bank, and to muskrats. The edge of this, the, well, actually, hell, the power pole that used to be here actually sat. See if we can get you zoomed in here. That stick right there, that stick's what I've been using to reach out to push the ball over the vortex. That is where the old power pole used to sit. And the two fence posts that are buried in the ground here, that one and this one, we had a board across those. And that board was the stop for the wheels on the old pump. And that old half tank in the ground with a piece of pipe in the middle, that was for the little pump and there used to be an underground that went up to give water to the back barn and to mom's garden. And that's how we watered her horse pasture too, rather than taking the, all the hand line back in the day up there. She just had a sprinkler. She'd move around, didn't have to shut anything off, just move it around. But no, this is what happens. And uh, you can't say, oh, the cows did it. Because there's a lot worse spots over where the horses are. And the horses have a lot bigger, well, 
they got way too much. There's like eight acres or nine acres in there for two freaking horses. The cows are in there right now, but in the last 10 years, the cows get that piece once a year to clean it up. Then the horses keep it down. And, uh, Used to get a visit from a nice gentleman at, from the state concerning the creek beds and that kind of thing. And we discussed stuff. First time he was here, he was, oh my gosh, look at all the damage the cows are doing. And I said, sir, um, do you see the cows in this field? This is over where the horses are. And he goes, mm, well, no, but look at all the damage they've done. Sir, they haven't been in here except for like five days out of the year for the last five years. And then he got to paying attention to what I was showing him on the creek banks and areas where all of a sudden it's dropped. Let's see if I can show you a spot. Actually, right across from me, there's the old stump in the middle of the screen and that tree there. And then it slopes down kind of as a flat ledge and then it drops straight off. Where it dropped straight off used to be the edge of the creek. It used to be a straight up bank on that side. Literally straight up. And uh, muskrats have gotten them and the nutria. They dig underneath that and eventually it just drops. And sometimes it ends up looking like this side. So uh, we do what we can to keep them from damage and stuff. And there's, you know. They got water besides the creek, so there's not a lot of reason to have to go to the creek other than to eat what's down there, which there isn't much right here to eat. Most of that's weeds. And like I said, the high water, and it's been like the last 15 years since it's actually flooded good here. This used to flood, and I'm kind of surprised when they put this new pole in when they did that they put the meter down so low. I got to lay on the ground to run the wires into that box and we used to stand up the switch on that panel box used to be my shoulder height and I'm you know well, I used to be 5'11 I've shrunk but you know I'm still 5'10 so my shoulders five feet off the ground that's where it used to be and we used to get five feet of water here usually at least three feet of water right here and it doesn't, once in a while it'll get covered, and that's about it. Last time it was covered, I was out here on the bike, and I, the foot pegs never got in the water. Yeah, that's as deep as it gets anymore. But, hey, that's already way too long. That's eight minutes, and I still ain't got nothing flying yet. So, we'll see what the day brings. One thing today brings is my best friend, a.k.a. my brother from another mother, who grew up here and lives in Georgia, he will be here today to visit. He comes up once a year to visit his dad and stays with us, so yeah, it might be a week. <laughs> yeah, I came back quick. Took a little longer than it should have for the pump to get up to pressure. I wasn't sure why. You know, it sounded like it got up to pressure, but it wouldn't hold. I figured it out. The riser stayed hooked. There's an adapter, four to three, and then three inch into it. And uh, of course, they're all different hooks. So that had some big bale twine on it. It's been holding fine. It got slacked. It couldn't handle getting jerked when the pressure hit it. So I got down and there's a mass flow of water down to the bottom of the hill. Got the riser shut off, so I get that back together. It's got a chain on it now that that needs to get cleaned out. I found my T-post pulling chain in there. I'm going, wait a minute, there should be a regular chain in here. I don't know why the T-post chain is still in there, but finally found the other one. It's not the one I thought it was. It's got a slip hook on one end and grab hook on the other, but it is working. I just wanted to show you how the visibility is here. I am literally not over 200 feet from that traveler. That gun. Here, let me, let me, let me, so you can see it. Oh, there it is. 
that gun is basically 200 feet from me and 200 feet from the traveler. I can't see the water coming out of it. I can barely make out the flapper moving. But wait, it gets better. Let me spin you around. I got to get up to do this. My body don't twist that far anymore. Follow the black hose. Follow the black hose. Ah, uh, there it is. Middle of the screen. You can see the flapper. Flapping away. I can't see the water from here. And I'm less than 200 feet from now. But hey, wait, on the news for the last three days, they've told us that we've had a half mile of visibility here every day. I'm not sure where. You guys have seen my videos. Piece of property I'm on is a perfectly square 40. That means it's a quarter mile both directions. And uh, we can barely see anything to the other side of it. Not enough to call it visibility. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. Irrigation woes, they happen. And, eh, I don't see too many wormholes up here. Harder to see them when you got the dead grass laying and stuff, because they'll be under it. I see a few spots that look like it. So there's some more for John Stevens. He'll love that. When we lived in town... The, the city of Banks, right downtown, had a half acre lot. We used to have some serious night crawlers. I mean, I don't know how many freaking margarine containers of night crawlers we filled up in a night. We decided we were going to go fishing or something, and or friends that were going to go fishing and they'd want some night crawlers. And we just go outside about you know nine thirty, ten o'clock at night, and just start grabbing them by the handful right there in the yard. But, ah, they're good for soil. They aerate it. The bad thing is, they draw moles. And moles aerate it too much. And then you have the uneven ground like we have here. I really wish you could see it in the video. I mean, you've seen us with moving equipment across the field, and it's not exactly smooth, but there's just little divots all over, like foot and a half, two feet in diameter, and it's all where they've dug out. It's fallen in. But the only way to take care of that is to run the big disc up here. And I don't really want to run the big disc up here. I can't get it up here anyway. I can't get it across the bridge. So then the alternative is the little disc. And you literally disc it until it's just about powder. And hope that the crowns are all still there. And the grass comes back. We've done it before. It usually works pretty good. Well, anyway, this is more of our day, and this is way more than enough for a video, so I'll probably just put it up. Maybe at noon. We'll see. Thanks for watching, everybody.